shout hallelujah. That is the way it works. When it is bad, that is when they auction things. <laughs> Amen? That is when they what? Auction things when it is bad. When it is bad. When business goes into bankruptcy, that's when you pick things for nothing. And all you need is for your footsteps to be ordered to the right place. Amen? The chair you are looking at, it belongs to a restaurant. They went bankrupt. They, 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 they threw it away. They gave it for nothing. Amen? Amen. Brand new, it cost about 60, 70 euro each. In bankruptcy, it became 5 euro. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. In bankruptcy. So, don't say the economy is bad. It is bad to make you good. Did you get that? Praise the Lord. So learn to say, Lord, the miracle in this situation, let me locate it. Praise the Lord. The time of the COVID was the time of the breakthrough of our business in Germany. I'm telling you the truth. Every business was closed except the one that deal with food. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And so the COVID period, while some businesses were going out of business, we were expanding in business. And from that time to now, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That is the secret. That is the secret. Amen? Amen? Learning how to take the place of grace in difficulties. By grace, I will make it. By grace, I will succeed. By grace, I cannot die. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Many of you are too quick to open the door for the devil. Please take your seats. Many of you. Amen? Amen. I shared a story with them in the morning about a Christian young man that was sick and went into coma. He went into coma and they were praying for him. They prayed and prayed and got even Papa Hagin to pray for this man, for this young man. And so Papa Hagin said as he was praying, 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 he heard in his spirit that the law of the spirit has been set and it cannot be reversed. He continued to pray for the young man. And the voice keeps saying, the law of the spirit has been set and cannot be reversed. And so when they went to the hospital, the man was in intensive care unit. As they got in there, they were still praying. The voice came again. The law of the spirit has been set, cannot be reversed. And then Papa Hagin now spoke out and said, please, this is what I'm receiving in my spirit. The law of the spirit has been set and cannot be reversed. Does it mean anything to anybody here? I don't know. The brother was there. The parents were there. Other people were there. They were praying for God to heal this man. And the voice came again. The law of the spirit has been set and cannot be changed or reversed. And then the brother that seniors him with one year, the guy in the coma, he said, please, let me say something. He said, when they were 18, 19 years old, they used to go and play around. And this brother will say, jokingly, that he's not sure that he'll make up to 40 years. From time to time, he will make it as a joke that he's not sure he will even see 40. And so, few months to his 40th birthday, he got sick. He got sick. And he was so terribly sick, they took him to the hospital. Eventually, he went into coma. And so they started praying. Then, then the Lord said, he has set the law for his life in the spirit realm. Nobody can reverse it. Just before he got to 40, he died. Why? He has set the law 
in the spirit for his life that he will not see 40. That he will not see 40. And he didn't see 40. The only way that could have been changed is because if he was able to hear and speak, but he was in coma. The devil is a bad business partner. Never make business with the devil. You won't win. Praise the Lord. Just for him to get to 40, he now gave up completely. When I said to you, hate poverty, I'm not joking with you. Look at poverty and say, I hate you. You will never be my friend. Mr. Poverty, I hate you. You will never be my friend. In the name of Jesus Christ. I told you many years ago, I was setting the law of the spirit in my life that I cannot be poor. People were angry when I say it. Those people that were angry are poor today. But I set the law in the spirit. I cannot be poor. And I'm still setting the law today. Because when you build, you reinforce. Is it not true? And so every day, I strengthened it with confession. I strengthened it with the word of God. I strengthened it with divine utterance. The Bible said the power of life and death is in the tongue. Use your tongue to navigate your tomorrow. Stop talking about defeat. Stop talking about the economy is hard. Is your name economy? No, your name is not economy. Praise the Lord. You may be in Nigeria, but Jesus said you are not a Nigerian. You are in the world, but you are not of this world. My Bible said to me that David was anointed as a king. And then there were 400 people that came to David. They came to David. And the Bible said many of them were outcasts. They were broke. They were drunkards. They had nothing. Praise the Lord. First Samuel chapter 22. They came. They were in distress. They were in debt. All the people that came to David had one problem or the other. They were about 400. The Bible said he became a commander of them. A commander of them. They were broke. They were outcasts. But they were under authority. How you come to God is not the issue. It's how you end in Christ is the issue. The end of a matter is better than the beginning. Praise the Lord. I used to drive a Mercedes. What are you driving now? I used to have a house. What do you have now? At Bishop Ben Street, a host of blessed memory, he said to us, Whatever that will make you drive Mercedes at the age of 35, and then at the age of 80, you are riding Okada. He said, I curse it in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. And I curse it also in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. He said, when I was young, you need to see the car I used to drive. See the picture. Okay, you were young. Now you are no longer young. What do you drive? Ah, if not be life. If not be people, if not be economy, eh? Eh? has God changed? The Bible said they all came to David. They were in debt. They were drunkard. They were outcast. They had nothing. They were 400. Sometimes we make too much of our present situation. If any man be in Christ, you can change anything. If you have the word of God, the Bible said in Hebrews 11, he said, by faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. Not by the economy. No, not by economy. Your life is in the word. And your life is in the word. And the word is your life. So how you treat the word determines how you will live. Have you not seen people that go for money ritual? They will tell them the goat is your boy. The goat is your friend. Is it not true? Yeah. Have you not seen it on TV? Yeah, you are looking like this. Have you not seen it? They say how you treat this goat determines how rich you will be. And you see a full groom man carry goat on his head. 
in the daytime. They said to him, this goat, if this goat die, you will die. Devil makes a bad deal. But our own, he says, the word is our life. Our life is what? In the word. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, he said, ask whatever you will, and it shall be given unto you. Say, that's what, heavy. Say, that's heavy. The word is my life. The word is my life. They came to David in bankruptcy. But, but when we go to First Chronicles chapter 12, the story of the men of David begins to change. Amen? Amen. They had come, the Bible said, all those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him. What kind of people are these? And so, as you come to this church, it doesn't matter how you have come. If you will submit yourself to the authority of the word of God, greatness is in you. Amen. Economy or economy is not your business. Your business is to flourish. Amen? Amen. Your business is to flourish. If you work with God, no economy will make you poor. If you walk in Christ, nobody can put you in crisis. The Bible says he is a head. Christ is a head of all principalities. Christ is a head of anything that will trouble you. And so when you sit with Christ as we are seated with him, we have been made alive with him, quickened with him, raised with him, made the seat with him. And so who is it that will trouble you? The problem is that you take this as a joke. You are not serious with God. You are not serious with God. Praise the Lord. Get serious with God and see your life transform. You say, uh, my husband told me not to come to church today. You are a fool. My wife told me not to come to church. You are a fool. Are you hearing me? Who is your wife? No, who is your husband that will stop you from serving God? Praise the Lord. The man had an appointment to go and pre preach somewhere. As he was preparing, the wife slumped. And he prayed and prayed and prayed. The wife passed on and died. And he was supposed to go and preach. He has gotten ready. They were supposed to go together. And the wife died. The man looked. He said, anyway, I don't have time for none. That. Let me go and do the work of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, anyway, devil, I don't have time for this. Let me go and preach. He left a dead wife and went to the place to the church he preached and preached and preached and said my wife's supposed to be here but she is occupied next time we will come here together but she sends her greetings to all of you <laughs> praise the lord he said he said she sends a greeting. A dead person sent greetings. I said, next time, I believe my wife and I will be here to the glory of God. Shout hallelujah. Everybody shouted hallelujah. After ministration, they took him home. He told the person, you don't need to come in. Just go. Praise the Lord. The man opened the door, entered. He said, honey, I'm home. Honey, I'm home. The wife said, the food is on the dining, I'm coming. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. She was dead. She was dead. She was dead. But she made dinner. She made dinner. And the husband said, I hope you're okay. He said, I'm okay. I don't know. I must have slept too much. I said, yes, you did. <laughs> Paul said, for this reason, many sleep. We don't recognize death as death. We recognize that sleep. Because you close your eyes, you wake up the other side. Shout hallelujah. Jesus said to them, Lazarus is sleeping. Let's go and wake him up. Amen. How you come to Christ is not the issue. It's what you are in Christ that's the issue. And what you will become after is a function of what you are. Nobody will dictate my service to God. Amen. When we newly got married, mommy's friend, they followed us to church. Offering time, I was giving <laughs> a hefty offering. Mommy's friend whispered to her, Come, oh, is your husband giving all his money to church? Mommy said, Please, that's the way. He gives. Don't even ask him or say anything. Amen. Amen. So be a generous giver is in your heart, not in your pocket. Did you hear what I said? To be a big giver has nothing to do with your pocket. Too. Your bank account is just a holder. But the generator of wealth is in the spirit. The generator of wealth is in the spirit. So, look, I know that I will never be poor. Praise the Lord. You can still get angry with me in church. It's my mouth. Praise the Lord. It's my what? And it's also my decision. I made it many years ago that I will not see poverty. No. 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 I don't give carefully. I give care freely. There were 400. They were with David. And the Bible said in First Chronicles chapter 12. Now. Now. These were the men who came to David at Ziklag. While he was a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men. How can outcasts become mighty men? And now they were among what? The mighty men. They were what? Helpers in the war. Helpers in ministry. I want you to put your this title today. Helpers in the war. Ministry is spiritual war. And we are always looking for helpers. We are always looking for helpers. Paul said, nobody go to war. No soldier go to war at his expense. So if you become a soldier of the Lord, you are qualified to have supplies. In the Ukraine war, both Ukraine and Russia, they are always looking for supply route. Supply route. Because the, the soldiers cannot supply themselves. In battle, they have to be equipped. In battle, they have to be maintained. In battle, they have to have uniform. They have to have everything through or false. So will God abandon you in battle? The only problem is that many of you are not engaged in the battle. And so that is why you are complaining. You don't have this. You don't have that. You don't have that. You don't have that. I am telling you, get involved in the war. Be a helper of the war. And you will see your life flourish. They were helpers in the war, verse 2. They said, they were armed with bows, using both the right hand and the left hand, holding stones and shooting arrows with the bow. They were of Benjamin, Saul's brethren. Ah! Ah! Some gathers joined David at the stronghold in the wilderness. Mighty men of valor, men trained for battle. Helpers of the war. 
helpers of the world. When you decide to be a helper of the world, you submit yourself to be trained. No soldier goes to war without training. And so nobody helps a minister without training. Submit to the training. Submit to the training. God did not plan that any of his children will suffer. But his children plans to suffer by trying to do it by themselves. That's the problem. I look at many people, even some of them were friends and all that. And I look at some of them, they used to be big and suddenly they are struggling. You see them. And then when I see them, I always ask, what happened? What happened? What happened? I always ask, what happened? What happened? Praise the Lord. A friend of mine who is one of the big pastors in Abba, he came to Lagos some years ago. I called him because we were quite close friends. And we grew up together. And he said, oh, Pastor, are you in town? I said, yes, take, please. I'm in Sososo Hotel, can you come? I went to his hotel. We talked and we chat. And we joked the way when we were small, you know, the way we used to play. We didn't know we'd become what we are today. And I asked him one question. I said, man of God, you are in this city. How is it that all the people that used to be big when we were small, growing up, they used to be big, they called the rich men in Abba, they would be in the first five. I said, how come that almost all of them have become poor? They are still alive. Many of them are still alive. And I said to him, you are the servant of God in that city. What is the problem? That many of them, they rose suddenly. I said, you and I know that that is not the way God works. What is the problem? You know what? I was shocked that he didn't have an answer. I was shocked. I called him again. I said, have you, have you thought about it? He said, you thought about it? He said, well, maybe some of them, when they, when they had money, they will have mistresses all over. They will have mistresses. I said, mistresses is not a problem. It is wrong. It is bad. But that's not a problem. How come? It's not all of them that have mistresses. I know some of them that are good Christians. But, but they used to be big. Suddenly they are small. And the question is that what went wrong? What went wrong? What went wrong? Amen? He didn't have the answer. When he told me what he said, I shook my said, no, that's not it. He asked me, what do I think? I told him another time. Amen? Amen. You want to know the answer? Do you want to know why? Another time. <laughs> Almost 95% of them, they used to be big. They used to be financially wealthy. Almost 95, if not 97 of them, they are now struggling. They are living on their past glory. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And God said that the blessings he gives goes from generation to generation or to the fourth generation. Or to the fourth generation. That's what God said. Amen. Amen. I say it, people think it's a joke, but I'm serious. I say nobody that is close to me will suffer. I'm telling you. Okay, if you think it's a joke, all of you that are close here, that live here, are you suffering? No, sir. No, let's look at that. You even have the audacity to, uh, uh, to register in gym. <laughs> Others are trying to put on weight. You are trying to lose weight. <laughs> Say the Lord is good. Lord. Even to register gym takes money, isn't it? Yes, uh-huh. so, so you have eaten. After eating, you manage to have money. And then you went to gym. <laughs> And what did you say? You say you are keeping fit. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. God has brought us from January to today. 
Is he not a good God? And he said, I have not done yet. No year has been as miraculous for us as from May last year to today. It has been miraculous and power packed. Amen. And that is also the time of, you talk it uncertainty, you talk about Tinibu, Buhari, changeover, and all that. It has not affected us. Praise the Lord. So I don't understand why you are complaining about Tinibu. What did he do to you? Have you ever met him? No. Have you ever met Tinibu? So what did he do to you? Get to know you are God. Get to know you are God. That's the important thing. Praise the Lord. Those that know they are God. <laughs> Those that know their God shall do what? They will be strong and they will do what? They will do exploits. That's the key. He said, grow in knowledge and in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The more you know, the more you increase. The more you know, the more grace you assess. Do you know there are, there are prayer points in this Bible, Holy Bible, that if you lift it up and pray it in three days, your life will change. Forget all the enemies of my father said, die, 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 die. Forget that thing. Forget. And that prayer is even unscriptural. You know why? First, no demons will die. Their time is not up yet. So, if you are not tired of saying, die, 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 it means that you are a fool. And the demons will like you for that prayer because they say, ah, this one have not even understood the ABC. Nobody can kill demons. Jesus did not kill any demon throughout his time on earth, did he? He said, in my name, you should do what? He didn't say we should kill them. No, he didn't say you should kill them. So you pray that, 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 you lost your voice. What happened? I said, prayer, prayer, we pray, we pray. <laughs> I told you now, church, where they say, bring out your machine gun, boom, 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 boom. set it, boom, 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 fire the devil, shoot again. It's a pastor that's leading them. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, climb into your bulldozer. Climb. Start your bulldozer. Boom, 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 boom. Run over the devil. Mm. You will see grown-up men, mature men, behaving like behaving like idiots, like zombies. Mm. What are you doing? You are driving their, their bulldozer over, over the devil. Boy, hold what and pour the devil. Light up the gas. <laughs> pour the devil hot water. Boom. You know what they are doing? They are manifesting wickedness in their heart. After service, they are soaked, soaked, soaked as if they were swimming. He said, today's service was hot. It was hot. What to do? He said, we dealt with the devil. We dealt with the devil. And the same man will go to his house in the night, he can't sleep. Are you hearing me? Let's not play with stupidity. Amen. Let us know how to deal with the enemy now. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. Paul said we may walk in the flesh, but we don't war in the flesh. Can this people read the Bible? He said, pray like that. Pray like that. It is spiritual prayer. Attack your enemy. No. The only attack we have is the word of God. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out. Bam, that is it. I rebuke you. Get out. In Jesus' mighty name. That is what we are told to do. And that is what frightens the devil. Praise the Lord. We must learn to glorify the name of the Lord. We must learn to know the word of God. If you love me, Keep my commandment. Know it that you may keep it. Praise the Lord. Amen. 